This lesson is on the five melodies, um, the mountain, theme by Haydn, lightly row, go talent Rodi, and the fox, as well as I'll do a quick lesson on Ode to Joy that follows it. These are all from my first method book, which just got re-released, so this is the 2019 edition. So let's dive right in. So at this point, you should be getting used to um, alternating your fingers and using the correct fingers in this hand. So just make sure that you're maintaining all the tips we learned previously, like staying on your fingertips, playing close to the frets, having your fingers curved at each joint, and that on the right hand, that you're following the fingering very carefully. You're alternating I am constantly. So one thing you can do is just say the right hand fingering out loud. But what I think I'll do is I'll just go through each one, mention anything that needs to be mentioned, and then we'll just uh, carry on to the other lessons. So the mountain, this essentially just brings the notes up and then back down. So a couple of different tips. Um, one thing, just anchor that right hand thumb on a bass string just to kind of support your right hand. And um, you could count and play. So like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or you could say the right hand fingering out loud. I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. Um, you could do all sorts of things. So you could say the note names out loud as well. C, C, D, D, E, E, F, F, G, 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 G. If you go through all these different ways of saying, <clears throat> of talking out loud while you play, you'll make sure that um, you're, you're really solid on each one, on rhythm, on the notes, on your right hand fingering. So just make sure that each melody that you play, don't just play it once and then jump to the next one. Go through it in these different ways until you feel very, very confident that you have the skills that you need to progress. So theme by Haydn, just make sure you start on the M finger this time. Another thing to watch out for is that you're not playing each note um, accented, like you're not going like this, but you're trying to make it a legato phrase. So just trying to connect those sounds a little bit more and not make it too note by note. So just nice legato phrases. Lightly row starts on the I finger. So again, just each of these melodies, go through the three ways, right? Count the beat out loud, say the right hand fingering out loud, say the note names out loud, just to make sure you're really confident. Go talent Rodi. Again, just being very, very careful about the, the alternating right hand fingers. There's a couple of awkward parts in that song where the fingers have to cross over a little bit, so just make sure you're following it. Say them out loud to make sure you're able to do it. So the fox, um, on this piece, this is a really great piece because if you stay on your fingertips, everything can ring out very nicely. If you're not on your fingertips and your fingers are curved over like this, you'll accidentally mute the strings out. If you 
You hear that? Because my finger is actually curved, it's not on its tip enough, so it's muting that string. It should sound like this if you're on your fingertip. So in a way, this is a great exercise because it forces the student to go home and listen to what they're doing and make sure that they're, if, they're, if they hear that muted note, that they're correcting it. Just make sure that you're not correcting it by throwing the wrist out like this. Lots of students do that, beginner students. They throw the wrist out. Rather than keeping the wrist straight, but curving the fingers more. If you curve your fingers at each joint, it'll be much better than like throwing your wrist out. So you can bring your elbow and wrist back, keep it straight, and just one thing that can help is bringing the palm closer to the guitar, which forces the finger to curve. If my palm's out here, look what happens to my finger. If it's closer, it curves more. As opposed to... And same thing on the fourth finger, right? You have to be curved. Like this or you don't want to throw your wrist out you can make it sound properly but it's not healthy right so wrist in straight bring the palm a little closer forcing that finger to nicely curve um, for Ode to Joy um, there's another video that you can see where um, I'm playing it as a duet so you can listen to that but in this new edition, um, I did keep the rhythm the same at the end. So when you hear the ending um, of each line, you're going to hear a dotted quarter note followed by an eighth note. Don't worry about this rhythm. We're going to learn it later. Just play it by ear. So just listen to it, hum the song, and then just play it the way it sounds. That rhythm at the end of in bar four and in bar eight, etc., goes one, two, and three, one, two, and three. I prefer to not count the and though. One, two, three, one, two, three. But don't worry about it too much at this point. I, I really think you should just play it by ear. If you get confused about rhythms when you're starting out, it can be very um, almost detrimental to the way that you play. So just play it the way it sounds. You know how that sounds. Just make sure your fingers are listening to your ears and listening to the way your mind hears the melody. So just play it in that way. And again, we'll have lots of exercises and, and ideas about learning those rhythms later on in the book. Um, feel free to just play it as quarter notes too. That's just fine. Um, that said, the next, um, next lesson will be on a little bit of sight reading and dynamics and the etude number three.